Hey guys, this is the video that you've been waiting for, right Tommy? Because today we're going to be talking about what? The Land Rover Defender, the TFL Defender that has been uh, out of commission. Now the crazy thing is we couldn't have made up the story. And what I mean by that is we are now waiting for our third Defender. Yes, you heard right, third Defender. So let's um, start at the very beginning, Tommy, and kind of walk them through how we've gotten to number three. Well, the Land Rover Defender debuted last year. We were very excited about it because the Defender has been dead in the US for several decades now. So when the order bags opened, we didn't order one immediately, but we waited till June. And then in June, we placed an order for the off-road purpose-built Defender. Yeah, our theory and our editorial plan was to buy a Defender that is everything you need and nothing you don't. In other words, prove that Defender has gotten its off-road chops back by ordering one that is specifically designed to go off-road. So none of the fancy stuff, right? All we wanted was the base Defender with the steel wheels, with the locking rear differential, uh, and we also ordered, of course, that middle seat because we thought it was cool. Yeah, basically the most functional Defender you can buy because a lot of them are upwards of $80,000. It starts at 50. We wanted an affordable one that we could take off-road. So we ordered it in June and we took delivery toward the beginning of October. Yeah, and it was everything that we wanted. And if you've been following the story, uh, you know what happened next. But before we get to that, we had an editorial plan in place. And that plan was basically to create a video series called To Hell and Back. We're not that far from Moab and the idea was let's outfit one out as off-road possible and what we'll do is we'll get it, we'll put bigger tires on it, you know, because it doesn't come with real off-road tires. Uh, we actually asked Land Rover for a winch because we wanted a winch as well. Uh, and then we'll do the series called To Hell and Back where we drive it from here to Moab, do Hell's Revenge and then drive it back. So test it on road, find out what the fuel economy is, then do the most classic of American off-road trails, Hell's Revenge and then drive it back. So we took delivery, like I said, toward the beginning of October. We did this video where we compared it against a, a really expensive one, like an $85,000 one. Uh, we did a video on TFL Now of driving it home from the dealership. And then the next day, we went up to the mountains and we did an off-road test, a fairly mild off-road test, just to see how it does straight out of the box. Nothing too crazy. Um, and as we were coming down the mountain, we were at about 11,000 feet above sea level. We got what? We got the check engine light. And the reason we took it off-road right away was uh, because we're at a time of the year here when we start to get snow. Yep. And once it snows, Webster Pass, which is where we took it, becomes inaccessible. So we wanted to at least take it off-road once before we got closed down for the season. So we got the check engine light and of course uh, it had 167 miles at that point. We drove it right back to the dealership, uh, gave it to the dealer and said, hey guys, there's a check engine light. That's right, so it was throwing a misfire code in a few of the cylinders. They did a software update on it, and then Andre went, picked it up, brought it back to the office, and all the cameras died. So it's got these really cool surround view cameras, you can see through the, through the hood, and all of the cameras died immediately when he got back from the dealership. So then Andre turned right back around and drove it back to the dealership to fix the cameras. And what was the fix for the cameras? Uh, the fix for the cameras was a module. Which was back ordered. Which was back ordered. Um, which they actually got. Yeah, so this is a new update. They actually were able to fix the cameras, but while they were fixing the cameras, the check engine light came back on. So basically what we were left with was a vehicle with full functioning cameras, but a check engine light. So let's talk about what they, uh, they looked at to try to fix the check engine light. And this is where the story gets really interesting, Tommy, because uh, like I say, you couldn't write this stuff. Uh, so what they, of course, started to do was uh, figure out you know, the basics of what an engine does, right? Which is fuel, air, and spark. And compression. And compression. So they ran through the ignition system, they checked the spark plugs, they changed out the coils, they went through uh, basically the whole ignition system to make sure it was getting strong spark. And that was the last update we did, which was a couple weeks ago. Since then, they've gone through uh, the air intake system, so they've looked at all the sensors on the air intake side of the engine, um, and they've looked at pretty much everything they can that would lead to a check engine light in this. And this is where things get interesting because they said basically that the engine is operating outside of its set parameters. Can you explain that? Yeah, so we've actually been dealing with uh, the PR team at JLR Corporate. So this is not the dealer anymore, now this is the corporation. And the engineers. And the engineers. Yep. Basically the problem is there was something deep in the engine where the engine was working outside of its parameters. It's having a misfire. 
Yeah, and keep in mind, Tommy, they did have a, a JLR engineer, you know, look at this because the car went from the dealership to a local JLR service center. Facility. Facility, right? Corporate, not dealer, where they worked on it. And then they've also been working on it remotely from the UK. So yeah. they've been software linking to it um, from the UK. And I have to say, they've been really great, right? JLR has been very communicative, uh, and this is where... I think maybe it helps that we have a YouTube channel uh, because I got a phone call uh, from um, JLR saying we've got a problem. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So the the problem with the engine was not repairable. Yeah. So they said it needs a new engine, yeah. and they wouldn't elaborate any further. But they said we believe from what we've looked at that this car needs a new engine. So here is what they were going to do. They said they could have a new engine import overseas by the middle of November and it would probably be stateside by the end of November. So this is a new two liter turbo we should explain. This is the four cylinder. Um, and then they could install it from there. Uh, but that kind of got us thinking, right? Because we didn't necessarily want a brand new vehicle that just had its engine replaced. Yeah, uh, and the guys at JLR and gals were great because they said, you know, we'll give you a new engine or do whatever you want. And basically at that point we had three choices, right? The first choice was to have a new engine installed, which you kind of don't want, right? I mean, the reason you buy a new car is you want that factory fresh. The seal. The seal. And once the dealership <laughs> installs a new engine or whoever does it, it's never going to be factory fresh. Uh, the other choice was, of course, you know, we could have gotten our money back. Uh, and then the third choice uh, was they were going to offer us a different car. Now, I know in the comment section there was huge talks about the Lemon Law, right. which in the U.S. is a way, um, it's a consumer way to get a refund on a vehicle if it's been in the shop which we for, gotten for 30 days. Yeah, we probably could have. And we were talking about it as a team um, internally, and we still really want to do the Defender Series. You know, perhaps it was a fluke with one car. We wanted to try it out on another car, give them a fair shot. So we said, can you find us another vehicle and this was that's very similar a four-cylinder you know that's pretty basic well yes uh the the difficulty is ours was a really specific trim like a very rare trim a six-seater cloth seats with the off-road group um and the rear diff lock and like that doesn't exist in the real world so and they, and they said yes but you have to order it yeah so they said we could get you the exact one you want but we'll have to order it and it'll take a couple months for it to get here and we said you know our, our viewers have been asking us constantly about defender updates can you get us one sooner and they said we probably can let us look through the inventory and they sent us back an email with two choices there was a white one and a blue one so the white one had an msrp of about fifty six thousand, and the blue one had an msrp of about fifty seven thousand. so it was pretty in line with what we paid for our first defender which was also about fifty six thousand dollars it was basically uh we bought the basic defender and there are what three models right there's the basic the s actually four the sc maybe five now the hse and of course the x uh, so we had the basic one. This was an S, so it had a little bit nicer seats, a little bit more leather. Well, it was it was similarly priced, right, but, but spec totally different. Yeah, so instead of like the off-road stuff, it had luxury stuff. It had none of the like off-road capability groups, but it did have like the heated steering wheel and then the heated windshield. Um, now this is not exactly what we wanted because we are big off-road enthusiasts, but it's still a Defender. It's still four-wheel drive. We'll make it work. It's still a low range. So we said. Yes, let's do this blue one. So they gave us a choice of a blue one or a white one that were very similarly spec. We specifically wanted the blue one because we wanted to make sure that when we did the next set of videos that you guys understood that it wasn't the same car, right? We wanted to draw a clear delineation between the old one and the new one, so we went for the blue one. Uh, and um, it arrived at the dealership. Uh, and we know that because we drove to the airport two weeks ago on our way to do the Durango uh, program, so we had to actually fly out. And as it happens, the dealership is on the way to the airport, and Tommy and I are driving by the dealership on a Sunday, uh, and we're like, hey, there's a Blue Defender parked in front, and it turned out that it was ours, the new one. So we got super excited. Yeah, so it has the, uh, the blue, or it has a little yellow sold sticker on yeah, it. Yeah. It was right in the front. We knew it was our Defender, so we, uh, we pulled off risk being late to the airport, but we just had to take a look at our new Defender. So I took a couple pictures there yeah, yeah. of the new Defender, which was really cool. Um, really cool color, uh, and we just happened to stumble upon it on the way to the airport. But why did we not take delivery of it on Monday? Because we remember at the very beginning of the series I said that we wanted a winch, and they're expensive, okay? And Land Rover, because we are doing the series, offered to give us one, uh, and it was back ordered. But when we got this car, they said, hey, the winch has arrived, do you still want it? And I was like, hell yeah, definitely. They're very rare, they're cool. We'll put it on so I'm thinking to myself this would have been two weeks ago that last weekend we're gonna get it do the update but on 
Friday of last week, we get a phone call. So we get the phone call and they said, look, we have the Defender. Um, the, the dealership has never done a winch install. It'll take them a few days to get this done. Yeah. And we said, that's fine. Uh, you know, take your time. We want it to be done right. So they, they, they did the winch install um, last week. But and it didn't work. It didn't work, yeah. So the winch didn't work. The winch they installed um, wasn't functioning properly. Right. Um, and they had to find another winch. Yeah, so they called us and they said, guys, we're really sorry. We want to give you this winch. We understand that it's important to you. We found another one in Canada. It's going to take a couple days to ship down here. And we're going to put a new winch on it. So now we're, you know, second car, second winch. And I'm like, great. I love the winch. Please do it. Very, you know, grateful for it. Keep in mind, at this point, we haven't taken delivery of the new no, car. No, we haven't. And we haven't seen our old car now for three weeks. Yeah, right? I mean, we, we, we just happened to stumble upon the blue one because we were driving by. Right, it was still, yeah, we haven't. Yeah, but we haven't actually driven it. We haven't taken delivery. So now we're up to about Monday the 16th yep. of November. Yep. Um, and, you know, new winch is going in, and we get a call on Wednesday. So this would have been the uh, 18th of November, Wednesday and Thursday. And they said, the winch install is almost done, but we want to make sure this Defender is right. So we're going to have our engineer drive this around all of Friday. So they weren't going to give it to us until today, which is the 21st, because yes. they wanted to drive it around on Friday, make sure all the kinks were worked out. But here's where it gets really interesting. Uh, we got a call, phone call, uh, actually, yeah, phone call last night. Friday night. Friday night, uh, saying basically, uh, yeah, yeah, it, like I said, we couldn't make this up. Saying basically when they installed the winch, uh, they had cut through a harness in the vehicle, uh, and that harness was not replaceable, and the vehicle was not deliverable. Basically, they couldn't give us the vehicle because the harness, I guess, killed it. Well, they said irreplaceable. Well, they could, yeah, it was. Yeah, you couldn't fix it, and they couldn't replace the harness. Right. So the blue one now is not an option. No. So we were supposed to take delivery today. We were really excited, but now we can't because they they cut through some loom. And we can't we can't drive the vehicle. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, so uh, right now we are working with uh, JLR uh, to secure a third vehicle uh, that hopefully we can get. I asked them if it's possible to get it before Thanksgiving, because look, guys, uh, you know we're different than most new car buyers, right? We're not buying this for a family member. We're not buying it as a daily driver. We buy these vehicles for a year, usually at the end of the year, for long-term tests. So we either build a video series around them, and we look at these cars kind of as movie stars in a movie, right? We build a video series around them, and then we sell them. Uh, and so uh, for us, um, you know, reviewing the vehicle is more important than having the exact right one. Uh, and uh, I just want to get the vehicle so that we can actually start making videos with it uh, and at this point, Tommy, I'm to the point where I'm, I'm really not even all that concerned about like the engine spec, uh, the the, the off-road spec. I just love to get a Defender because I'm out there watching other people do Defender videos, and this is a competitive business, and you know we want to be part of that conversation. Uh, so we're working with Land Rover right now, hopefully to secure another one. I like the blue one. I think that they have two blue options for us, uh, and hopefully before Thanksgiving, we'll be at the dealership picking up. A defender. So in recap, I'm just going to do the quick sure. Tommy TFL rundown. Yeah. Bought the white one, first yeah. white one, at the beginning of October. Had it for two days, um, and then it's been at the dealer for the camera and most importantly the check engine light. Land Rover wanted us to make it very clear to you guys they could fix that one. Yep. It does need a new engine, yep. but it will be fixed. We didn't want that one, so they said, okay, let's find you another one. They found us the blue one, uh, about the same price. The blue one we never took delivery of. Uh, they put the winch in, first winch broke, second winch, they had that issue with the wiring harness, they told us, so that one's not an option anymore, and now we are on to our third one. So that's the, uh, the 30 second synopsis. Yeah, and uh, I'm hoping that, like I said, before Thanksgiving we actually have one. Uh, I'd still love to do that video series uh, to Helen back to show how good these are off-road. At this point, I don't care if it's a four-cylinder or a six-cylinder. Uh, I do want a different color than white because I do want to show the difference between the two. Uh, and yeah, let us know uh, what you think of this ongoing saga in the comments below. Uh, Tommy, to be continued. Yeah, and you know, we want to make it very clear too, we are uh, not being paid by Land Rover to be silenced on any of this. We're just telling them, we're telling you guys like they've been telling us. Yeah, yeah, and they've been great. They've been very transparent. They've been very open about it. Uh, and you know, one of the core, um, 
One of the core principles of TFL that we founded this on is transparency. So we wanted to do this video. We would have done one earlier, but for the last basically three weeks, we were expecting to have uh, a vehicle within uh, the studio to shoot it, and it just... <laughs> You know, week after week, something <laughs> crazier happened. Uh, but now you know the entire story. And as soon as, you know, this resolves itself, and as soon as we actually get our hands on one, uh, we'll go do the hell and back. Hey guys, every year we buy a bunch of trucks and at the end of the year we sell them. And this year we're going to sell them on our own website. Yep, we started an auction website called tflbids.com and it's up and running. So if you have a cool truck like this Raptor or perhaps like a TRX and you want to sell it, check out tflbids.com. More importantly, we'll be selling our very own F250, you know, the one that's got the lift on TFL Bids and that truck is live right now. So if you want that truck, click on the link below, visit TFL Bids because TFL Bids, get this, is all trucks all the time. Thanks for watching and we really appreciate you guys uh, watching our videos and checking out all of our YouTube channels. As always, this is Tommy. No, you're Roman. Oh, see, I'm already confused. As always, this is Tommy. And Roman saying thanks for watching. <laughs> and check out tflbids.com. See you guys next time. Ciao.